Hi, I'm Laurie. I'm going to talk to you about PDD curves. This is part three of the videos, you know, photon beam characteristics. So um, we talked about inverse square and attenuation scatter. Now we're talking about depth dose curves. There's a quiz at the end of this is associated with the information in this slide deck. The percent depth dose uh, describes how the radiation uh, behaves as a function of depth, that is when you have a, a detector in a water tank underneath a radiation, megavoltage radiation beam, we move, increase the depth of that um, detector by keeping a constant uh, SSD, so we're increasing both the depth and the distance from the source to our point of interest at the same time, by keeping the surface of the water tank at the same distance from the radiation source. So these curves typically normalize at Dmax. Dmax is the depth of maximum dose, uh, and it's 100% on the PDD curve. And it's always in percent. There's a build-up region where dose calculations are not reliable. Um, it's due for two reasons, partly because of the steepness of the curve there, and, uh, and also because of the variability of, the, of that part of the curve due to varying amounts of contamination from the head of the radiation source, the head of the liner. So the, the, but what is reliable is, more reliable is the uh, curve past the depth of maximum dose, but it's a, a curve that's a combination of inverse square function. So these inverse square distances relative to the calibration distance and an exponential decay as a function of depth as well as some scatter factors. So the PDD shape depends on field size, SSD, depth, and energy. A little bit more about the build-up region. So uh, what we have is photons entering the surface of the patient of a phantom, and they are start interacting immediately with that material and uh, depositing energy into the electrons. But those electrons predominantly move downstream and, and deposit their energy continuously as they move downstream. Some of them move upstream, but more on average, there's more energy deposited by the electrons downstream because they're predominantly moving downstream. So that, that's basically why there's a low dose region of the surface. So there's some terms here, kinetic energy released in a medium. You can think of that as being related to the photons interacting with the medium. And dose is energy absorbed in the medium. So you can think of that as the charged particles, usually the electrons, depositing their kinetic energy. So the process is photons enter the phantom and deposit their energy into the electrons another charged particles. And then these electrons move predominantly downstream, continuously depositing their energy until they stop. There is a maximum, um, because of a combination of the effects of photon attenuation and electron range, the limited electron range. So the build-up region is approximately uh, the same as the magnitude as the range of the electrons. So we have a question here for you. So for, for 15x parallel pose fields, at what depth do you expect to see the maximum dose? So here is a picture of parallel pose radiation fields. You can see there's higher dose uh, near the edges here and uh, lower dose in the middle. I'm giving you the table, so the answer is about 3 cm for 15x. So even though there's two beams, they don't, they, they don't really change the shape of the PDD curve. Each anterior posterior beam is one PDD curve, and the, and the posterior to anterior beam is another PDD curve. And when they add up, you still get maxima around the same position as maximum in the individual beams. So it's just nice to see that you know the 
physics, you know, between the water tank and the, on the patient still is still the same, approximately. So as a function of energy, uh, you know, PDD can change quite a bit. Let's get this. Sorry. So, as a function of energy, the PDD can change quite a bit. Uh, it, essentially, because of the higher photon attenuation, uh, you have steeper slope on lower energy uh, beams and more shallow slope on longer, higher energy beams. But for the radiation therapy regime, where we're sort of in the 6 MV to 15 MV range, typically, it's a very really narrow range that we're we're using, you know, our PDD-10, that is our PDD at the depth of 10 cm, is, is around 60 to 80 percent. So, this is, so what, our question is why don't we go higher? And now, one, one of the reasons is because of neutron contamination. So, when you go higher, you get more neutron contamination. This is, uh, Passing through the whole body and it's coming, it's coming from the head of the lanai, so and it's spread isotropically around uh, the room from the head of the, the lanai, approximately isotropically. So it can have, it can give significant dose to the uh, healthy tissue uh, field areas. If we treat the five cm deep target with a six mv open beam. What is the dose to the skin in percent of Rx? So here we have PDD curve and uh, the PDD at the depth of 5 cm where the target is, is 85%. So if we want to treat that target to 100% of our prescription, we have to scale everything up, right? So you scale up your, the dose so your target's not getting 100%. And that, but there's the, the still the same physics, the same shape of the PDD curve. <clears throat> and so now the skin is, is gaining 64% because it's the ratio of 100 over 85 times 55, which was the original PDD uh, uh, dose. So at the surface. So PDD also increases with field size, or more specifically, the slope uh, gets more shallow. So at deeper depths, the, the value of PDD at a given depth increases, with increasing field size. It's just because the bigger the field size, the more scatter contributions there are, and it just raises up the PDD curve. Right, so PDD changes with SSD, so that is when you move your patient further from the radiation source or phantom, the percent of dose also changes. Uh, that's basically because you're changing the inverse square law, so you, as you move further away um, of the same depth range, you've got a smaller change in uh, the total inverse square uh, as a function of the point of interest to the source. So basically the slope of the PDD gets more shallow as you go, if you increase PDD. So the PDD at any given depth increases as you increase the SSD. So just to go over those three things, again, it's good to know that as you increase the energy, the PDD past Tmax at any given depth increases. So, for example, a 10 cm deep, a 6 mv is about 67% PDD, and then a 15 mv is more like 75, 76%. And the depth of maximum dose also increases with energy, because that's because the electron range is increasing, with increasing energy. The field size increases, causes also causes the PDD to increase. As SSD increases, PDD also increases. Equivalent square field size. So this is a, a trick we use. So um, 
we, we can convert non-square field shapes into an equivalently sized square field. So the equivalent square field size has the same PDD curve as a non-square field. And for rectangular fields, there's a very easily formula. It's, it's 4A over P, so 4 times the area over the perimeter. So we can use this to convert irregular fields into equivalent square field sizes. Okay, so just to go over some of this PDD stuff, there is a quiz you can take. And I just put some questions here also, uh, so you can pause the video if you want to go through them. And that's it. Thank you.